I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Well, drilling it by hand works, but that's a lot more work than I want to do. I'm going to add some mechanical advantage. This twist drill bit in the drill press will make short work of that. bit down in the pocket I previously established with the Forstner bit. I'm going to clamp the vise to the table. that's going to work. I think I have it. Ah, this one needs to be stoned down. What I've got is a number two taper on a drill bit adapter. But it's an old one. It's been beat up pretty badly. So it's not running centered.
Now when I worked at United Technologies, I had a toolmaker that worked for me. Very knowledgeable fellow by the name of Paul Fouché. That was 30 years ago when Paul was almost to retirement. When, he, when I started and he did retire before I left. So I don't know if Paul's around anymore. But if he is, here's to you, Paul. You taught me a lot. He called this filing off Dutchman. Now, Paul Fouché, as you can imagine, was French. And evidently, there's a bit of rivalry between Frenchmen and Dutchmen. And I don't know if this is true, perhaps one of you guys know. The Pennsylvania Dutch I'm told, spoke Deutsch, which is German. So perhaps he was talking about Germans. Now we all know that the French and the Germans have gotten along famously throughout history. Don't know there are all the reasons behind it, but I think Paul might have been talking about Deutschman. And me with my young ears didn't pick up on it. I imagine somebody put this into a drill press or a lathe, either one, and spun this in the tailstock or the spindle. And that would cause these radial grooves in the shank of this bit extension. Center. At least a lot closer than what we were. Ah, I got a big old wormhole along the side. That's what's tearing out of me. Got another quarter inch before it comes out round. It's a real temptation to reach out and grab a hold of that spinning thing just to see, well, I should be able to feel if it's round. Well, that's a great way to get a sliver in your finger. 
Hold back on that temptation. Don't follow it. Well, that's two inches in diameter. <clears throat> I'm going to need to go down at least another eight just to get rid of that crack there. That'll still leave me a good 3 16 That's more than enough for a stop on the handle. I don't want to have a large diameter stop on that handle. It's going to look funny. All I want to do is just make it big enough so that it won't slip through the handle itself. So I want to take it down to inch and a half diameter. And that'll get rid of that split in the end there. If I take it down to inch and a half diameter, that'll take a quarter inch off the outside of this. That'll get rid of that split right there and bring it down so I'll have a nice button on the end of it. And that should work quite well. Hmm. That rough spot just wants to keep tearing out. If I use the heel of the tool and let it ride on there like a bearing, then it'll slice better and it doesn't tear out. If I hold the, the tool flat more like a scraper, it tends to tear out more. So I'm thinking if I'm real careful along in through here, I can shave that down. Yeah, I think that's got it.
the tear out is practically gone. be sanding and I have an allergy for oak. I think that's going to work quite well. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments below. You know I read them all. Thanks for stopping by.